So just before we dive into today's video, there is one actor back in 2022, teased he might be in the next season of The Mandalorian, Charles Baker from Breaking Bad. Back in August, he used the hashtag this is the way. When I covered the room at the time, some fans noted that due to his distinctive features and blue eyes, with some makeup and prosthetics, he could be made to look like a young version of Snoke. We know that's Moff Gideon's aim, and it could be something safe for the finale, the payoff of chapter 19. I for one would love to see more tie-ins to the cloning subplot, and after some rather interesting and goofy cameos in this week's episode, it's going to be great to see a more meaningful one to the overall plot of what the Mandalorian is leading up to. There have been a couple of rumours that the next two episodes, both by Rick Famuyiwa, are somewhat controversial in some of the things they intend to do. And I wonder if that's going to connect to the Praetorian Guards rumour and the first product of what took place on Navarro last season. We don't know where the Imperial Remnant took their cloning project after that. So far in season 3, the best stuff has not even been Mando based. In my opinion, it's the New Republic stuff that shines. At times, it's felt like we've had two shows merged into one, which might just be the case. They've definitely incorporated aspects of the now cancelled Rangers of the New Republic for The Mandalorian season 3, and word on the street is that we're going to see more of it in the next episode and also in the Ahsoka show. But for me, everything on Coruscant, everything teased for Moff Gideon, has been an absolute delight. I just can't wait to see him, and maybe who he answers to because I don't think it's Thrawn. And speaking of Gideon, aside from his cloning plans, the big subplot of this season is his return as a Mandalorian, a pseudo-Mandalorian, one who's obsessed with the culture. He's the one who stole the Darksaber from bo and now that she's got it back, he's gonna try and get revenge. He is out for blood. Is she gonna kick his ass? We're just gonna have to wait and see. But today, my dear friends, we're gonna be talking about something a little bit different, but stay tuned because there are Mando topics at the end. Enjoy. Hello my dear friends, and welcome back to another video. So at the moment, we're talking a lot about The Mandalorian, The New Republic, the upcoming threat of Thrawn in The Ahsoka Show, and generally speaking, the post-return of the Jedi Star Wars universe. It's a fascinating time. We've seen Luke Skywalker come in, Ahsoka, Bo-Katan, Sabine Wren's coming in The Ahsoka Show, other Star Wars Rebels characters too, like Zebaralios, and so on and so forth. But one thing that many fans have been wanting since the sequel trilogy didn't give it to us is a reunion on screen screen between Luke, Han Solo, Leia, Chewie, and Lando. Now, when it comes to Leia, that's going to be difficult to do. They could use her daughter, Billy Lord, or do what they did with Luke in the Book of Boba Fett and Mando Season 2, and Lucasfilm clearly have the means to do it for Han Solo. A DH Harrison Ford is going to appear in Indiana Jones 5, as we saw in the trailer. So why don't they do it in the Mandoverse? Well, I think that's something that John Favreau does want to do, but there's one character in this era, especially in Star Wars Legends, that doesn't get enough love, is Lando Calrissian. Whether it's the OG Thrawn trilogy or even the book I was reading the other day, Star Cave of Thomboka, Lando in the original trilogy and post Return of the Jedi timeline is fascinating. And one of the shows that's been largely forgotten amidst the ones that have dropped or are gonna drop is The Lando Show, a series that acts as a spin off to Solo with Donald Glover as Lando Calrissian. Well, over the last year or so, we have heard Donald Glover once or twice kind of bring up the subject, nothing too concrete, but just a mention here and there. But Kathleen Kennedy back in in 2020 and again in 2021 confirmed it's definitely happening, but it's been radio silence on Lucasfilm's end ever since. And with Star Wars Celebration this weekend, I'm not too hopeful it's something that's going to get an update. They're focusing on the movie stuff, the live action panel with Andor Season 2, Mando Season 4, Skeleton Crew, Ahsoka and so on. So what's going on with Lando? Well, thankfully in a new interview with GQ, Donald Glover did spill the beans. But what's really strange is he said they're still in talks. You would have assumed if they had this planned back in 2020, talks would have already happened. Justin Simeon was meant to be directing. Donald Glover says he can't say too much, but it does sound like even he doesn't know when it's going to happen, if it's ever going to happen. Check out what he said. I would love to play Lando again. It's a, it's a fun time to be him. It just needs to be the right way to do it. You know, like people kind of realize like their time is valuable. I'm not interested in doing anything that's just going to be like a waste of my time or just a paycheck. I'd much rather like, you know, spend time with people that I like enjoy. So it just has to be the right thing. We're talking about it. That's as much as I can say. 
So there you go, and you've got to respect the man for really wanting to do projects that mean something, good quality, good writing, good people to work with, and he doesn't want to do a Lando show just for the sake of it, just for the name. And this does give me a bit of hope that if the show does happen, and he's executive producing on it just like Ewan McGregor for the Kenobi show, there's going to be some level of quality control, because he talks about time being of the essence, how time flies, and how all the conditions have to be right, and that applies to the quality of the writing and directing, so I really hope the Lando show does happen. Now, we've spoken about this in the past, but when in the timeline could it take place? I'm keeping my fingers crossed, it's a Mandoverse era show. There is so much to explore with Lando in this time period. Pirates, scandals, adventures with Chewie and Han, and the wider story of a Mandoverse era endgame event where Lando joins our heroes. I really think that'd be a valuable story to tell, one that's definitely worth telling, at least in my opinion. But Lando is just another example of one of those movies and shows that gets sidelined by Lucasfilm, and I do think it's a shame. Donald Glover, whatever you thought of Solo A Star Wars Story, is a phenomenal actor. Anyone who's worked with him says he's a creative genius, and I do think he suits the role of a younger Lando. And with that being said, you never know if he's already cameoed in Skeleton Crew, The Ahsoka Show, or is gonna cameo in Mando Season 4. As far as we know, and what we do know is very limited, there's not been any stories written, no pre-production, no advancement on this project. None of the leakers or outlets even speak about it anymore, because it's so uncertain. We just don't know what the situation is, what the status of that project is. I would be amazingly surprised if they did prepare something for Star Wars Celebration, but as I say, my dear friends, do not count on it. The announcements are going to be based on Mando and Ahsoka, but I very much doubt we're getting anything for Lando. But that is the latest, and those are the comments by Donald Glover. And so now, my dear friends, at the start of The Mandalorian Season 3, Chapter 22 by Bryce Dallas Howard, Axe Woves, Cosca Reeves, and the other Night Owls won a mercenary mission. A Mon Calamari prince had fallen in love with a Quarren captain, and the prince's father, a Mon Calamari viceroy, did not agree to their love. Generally speaking, the Quarren and Mon Calamari live peacefully amongst one another on Mon Cala, but also on the moon of Trask. But they do have a history of tensions. I touched upon this in my full episode breakdown, and go check it out if you've not done so. I do want to go into a little bit more depth. The Quarren species evolved in the high pressure depths of Mon Cala's oceans. Here they mined the rich mineral sea floor. They shared the depths with other species, but by 4500 BBY, the Quarren met with Mon Calamari, who lived in the shallower parts of the ocean. For the first time, Time, these two were forced to live amongst one another. The Mon Calamari wanted peace, but the Quarren were skeptical of their friendship. They were suspicious that the Mon Calamari would attack them. This instigated a long war between the two species. In this episode, we've seen how far the Quarren have come, and as I say, we did see it to some extent in Chapter 11 of Season 2, and also in the Clone Wars. Not to mention in a very brutal but famous issue of the Vader comics. So as such, the two species never really fully trusted each other, and so when there's interspecies love or marriage like in this case, Mon Calamari or Quarren parents with more traditional views are probably not going to give their blessing, they oppose that kind of thing, as we saw in this case, but it could also be to do with the royal thing. After all, the prince was the son of a viceroy, so here you have other factors like social class and so on. Even if the female Quarren herself, Captain Shuggoth, was in fact very wealthy. Now despite a lot of fans being critical of chapter 22 on the whole, I just want to praise how well written this tidbit was, and how seamlessly this established bit of lore was included in an otherwise meaningless sequence in the context of the whole episode. I mean, yes, it was to give us an example of what bo Night Owls had been up to after they abandoned her, but this is stuff you typically see in the Clone Wars or Rebels, but I appreciate them showing us some random mid-rim Quarren Freighter, and how in a very small way it builds up perception of this period of the galaxy. Sometimes it's not just the big characters that shape our understanding of a certain political time in the galaxy, but the average people as well, or those not of note, that's something George Lucas did very well. And let's be real, you didn't expect Mon Calamari and Quarren Love. I know it was Bryce Dallas Howard's episode, and she included those in Chapter 11 The Heiress as well, but this was unexpected, less so Tom Holland's brother voicing him. And another factoid you might not have known is that this is the first time in canon we're hearing the language Quarrenese spoken on screen. Staying on the subject of Mando for just a minute, Jack Black as Bombardier was a huge surprise that I don't think anyone saw coming. There were no rumours or leaks of his appearance, so that is something they kept under wraps, and to celebrate his Wild Star Wars debut, Jack Black has shared a few pictures. Let's take a look. So The Mandalorian Season 3 introduces Jack Black and singer Lizzo into the Star Wars universe as a couple ruling over the Alterim world of Plazir 15. On Instagram, he shared a behind the scenes with Lizzo and Jack Black has a mighty, majestic beard. 
He said, so fun working with Lizzo on The Mandalorian as the king and queen of Plesia 15. I mean, this was probably the most random part of the entire episode. Even their outfits are more quantum mania than Star Wars. And going back to the Clone Wars thing, this is something I'd expect from Dave Filoni in a Clone Wars episode, one of the earlier seasons. I've already talked about my criticisms, what I disliked and what I loved, and we still have two episodes to go. So despite everything, even though we're six out of eight episodes in, I'm gonna give the last two a chance and see where they go with this, because at the moment, apart from the first three episodes and the end of the last two, there hasn't been too much plot development. Of course, Bo-Katan and the Darksaber, but again, that was at the end.